William Howard Taft, who easily won the presidency in 1908. Taft shared Roosevelt's progressive beliefs, if not his overwhelming popularity. His much more conservative approach to reform disappointed not only the more progressive members of his own party, but the public at large. The fact that the third party candidate, socialist Eugene Debs, received almost a half a million votes for president was a clear indication that a great many Americans wanted more radical change than even Roosevelt had pioneered. Now under Taft's leadership, they felt cheated. Although he was physically large, six feet tall and 350 pounds, Taft was no match for the size of Roosevelt's personality and popularity with voters. Taft was a distinguished lawyer and judge, but timid and uncomfortable as a politician. When he lost re-election to Woodrow Wilson in 1912, he returned to his real love, the law, and became the only ex-president to have been chosen as a chief justice of the Supreme Court. He said the White House was the loneliest place in the world. I don't remember that I ever was president. Taft's one term as president was not without success, but the bitter political wrangling within his own party distracted the public's attention. Taft actually broke up more than twice the number of trusts as Roosevelt during his presidency. He convinced Congress to pass the Man Elkins Act, giving the Interstate Commerce Commission the ability to regulate telephone and telegraph companies. And he urged Congress to pass the 16th Amendment to the Constitution, a federal income tax. It was ratified by the states a year after he left office. Still, Taft was more sympathetic to the demands of the conservatives in the Republican Party than the progressives, and the public believed he was failing to continue Roosevelt's reforms. They were outraged when Taft signed the Payne-Aldrich Tariff, raising prices on imported goods, and incensed when Taft fired Gifford Pinchot. When Theodore Roosevelt returned to America from overseas in 1910, he was given a hero's welcome. The public urged him to seek a third term as president, and two years later, he did. However, the Republican Party refused to seat Roosevelt's delegates to their convention, and as a result, Taft was renominated as a presidential candidate on the first ballot. Furious, Roosevelt and his supporters formed their own political party, aptly named the Progressive Party. After, Roosevelt boasted, I'm as strong as a bull moose and ready for the fight. The Progressive Party then became known as the Bull Moose Party. Former friends and party members, now political enemies, Taft and Roosevelt battled each other for votes. Taft called Roosevelt a dangerous egotist, while Roosevelt said Taft was a fathead with the brain of a guinea pig. Meanwhile, the Democratic reform governor, now presidential candidate Woodrow Wilson, championed his own progressive program called the New Freedom to American Voters, and wisely steered clear of the bickering between Roosevelt and Taft. Don't interfere when your enemy is destroying itself. With the Republican Party vote split between Taft and Roosevelt, Wilson won a majority of the Electoral College votes and became president.